Is there anybody on this channel that doesn't want to hear that music? <laughs> I know it's probably one of the most hated fight songs in college football, and, and we love it for that reason. Not only the fact that it's ours, but the fact that nobody else likes it. Uh, welcome to the channel. We're uh, starting to build some content uh, slowly but surely, and obviously still working on some cosmetic. This is a fairly new uh, they call it a virtual layer background that uh, it's one of my favorite shots of a very favorite quarterback of mine way back when. So um, obviously you can see that publisher USC24x7.com is slightly cut off by my crazy logo. Uh, Got to work with my digital editor on that one. Uh, but today I thought when I, when I think about themes and I think about, you know, the types of things that, you know, are, in front of us as a football program. Um, it's all, it gets back to one word, expectations. I think last year it, it was surreal that we, we got Lincoln Riley in no, you know, the November, December time frame of previous year. And yet we knew he only had weeks to days to try to turn the ship from finding more icebergs to where 11 and three became a reality and two of those losses to the same team. So um, <clears throat> hats off to Utah on being able to stop the presses on us, but um, expectations, the one word that keeps coming back to me is just that. I know my expectations were I thought that we were a four loss to maybe even a five loss team because of all the unknowns and the expectations that we had on the offense we didn't have a lot on Caleb Williams. And then, you know, who are we going to attract? Um, you know, obviously getting Addison uh, and others to come over uh, on an offense that was already, you know, pretty well ready to go, uh, with the exception being, you know, Caleb Williams at the helm. But I felt all along that uh, Miller Moss was still somebody who I felt uh, could have been a starting quarterback, if not at USC last year, uh, elsewhere, if not for Caleb Williams. Uh, no argument regarding Caleb Williams, of course. But, you know, fast forward a year, 11 and threes in our rearview mirror. Uh, the expectations this year, I mean, you got to look at the offense. Can it get better? Yeah, it can get better. It, it can get a lot better. It can beat Utah. Right, It can get in there in the tough games and run the ball down the throat of the other team's defense, which will open up the offense. So expectations that I have is that we do more with the running game than we've done in the past. And the past for Lincoln Riley is all of one year. So, yeah, not upset at all with what I saw last year. I thought the running game was coming along. I think we've got some really interesting pieces of the puzzle with the running game this year. So I'm excited to see what Ray Lee Brown's going to do this year, right? I mean, he has that spark. He, he comes into a game and I'm not trying to compare him to, uh, you know, Reggie Bush and all that we saw that Reggie did on the field, uh, which, you know, you had to watch his plays three or four times to figure out if it was real. But Ray Leak has kind of that twitch kind of feeling about him that if he gets into space, and that's the key, he can make things happen. Uh, but I also saw him run between the tackles and show some power that I didn't know was there. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, we have a lot of tools on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side going into last year, I just closed my eyes. I honestly thought that we didn't improve. I, I didn't know much about Alex Grinch, but you know, if Lincoln Riley's going to bring somebody with him and put him in charge of what I believe is the difference between being a really good offensive team and a championship caliber team, then it's all with uh, Grinch this year <clears throat> to show us that he deserves to be the head coach on the defensive side. Um, we did get some good recruits coming in this year. The linebacking crew looks great. The edge could be really interesting now with uh, what's developing out there. And unfortunately with the rain in California, North and South, um, it's impacting spring ball. So uh, hopefully everybody stays healthy. Hopefully uh, we get the work in that we need. I don't know if they can play around the schedule because of the rain, but 
Uh, you got to play with mother nature, right? You got to learn how to play with adversity and the weather systems that are going to hit us when we go to Notre Dame every year, as we have every other year, I should say. But um, be, it, be that what it may be in the future, who knows what the weather will be each week. You just got to be ready for it. No excuses. Um, so defense, I think, has the biggest hill to climb this year. I think what Grinch and staff have to do is they've got to improve statistically, statistically by 40 to 50% from where they were last year. Now, some people are saying 10 to 20% gets us over the, the hump. I think that puts, that puts too much pressure on the offense, and it doesn't get the type of yield that a Grinch at this level of the game should be applying to developing a standout defense, a shutdown defense. That's what I expect to see going into, you know, fall camp and certainly week one and beyond is we have more of a shutdown defense. Uh, we haven't seen that at USD in quite some time. So Grinch has his work cut out for him, but I also think he's got an opportunity. I mean, everybody was calling for his head after last year, um, angry about the Tulane game, angry about the two losses to Utah. Well, they happen. Uh, by the way, Reggie Bush did win a Heisman. It happened. So get move on. Let's get to the point where we're talking about how, how that last game just knocked your socks off because this team can do it. And then <clears throat> another area that I think Lincoln Riley has not de-emphasized, but he hasn't emphasized, and that's special teams. Special teams can turn a game around. Special teams can, you know, put the defense in good position and can also put the offense in great position on a kick return. So, I'm a big believer in the focus on the special teams. I think it makes, <coughs> excuse me, a big difference in the quality of what's on that field. But it also puts a mindset on the other coaching staff. They have to prepare for special teams and what might happen when there's no real focus on special teams because everybody's got a piece of it, no real head coach, no special teams coach. How much time are you going to spend on USC's uh, development of that part of the game, which arguably is 20% maybe? <clears throat> so, you know, making a difference there. I'd love to see more emphasis on special teams. I'd love to see us, you know, when our punter comes in, that we're going to drop that ball inside the 20. And there's a high likelihood that that will happen every time when it's available. And, you know, getting us out from being deep in our own uh our own end of the end zone and getting them out to the 25, 30 yard line coming back at us. So uh, love to see those things. And then, you know, field goals, extra points, those things matter. And so I'd love to see more emphasis, more discussion coming from the coaching staff about what's being done on special teams since we don't have a focal point. Uh, or should we just say, hey, it's not an, it's not an interest point. An area of investment that you know Lincoln cares that deeply about, and he's willing to give up and have you know average or uh, low-level expectations of special teams as compared to offense and defense. Could be key next players. I honestly think it's one player, the one player that is going to do something special this year. In my opinion, I'm going to say it very early on is Mr. Branch. That kid enters the field of play, whether he's practicing or he's in a tournament or he's, you know, doing a TikTok. This kid is electric. This kid sees things that haven't developed yet. He He's very visual. You can tell he finds routes that he sees that are two, three steps away. Uh, that's amazing capability. His, his route running and decision-making are at a level of development that are extremely high. And uh, so he's, my, he's that guy that I'm looking at as the new kids coming in, whether it's the transfer portal or uh, high school. Uh, he's got, in, in my opinion, uh, tremendous upside to do things very explosively and certainly change the game. So uh, just routing back as we come to the end of this, uh, I'm gonna to try to keep these as short as I can um, as we develop this channel. 
Uh, but uh, getting back to the theme here, expectations. Uh, my expectations are much higher this year than last. I actually have expectations that the defense is going to scale proportionally and improve proportionally and then bring it on Saturdays. And God forbid, hopefully not on Fridays. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm anxious to get to fall camp and see who's taking that number one, number two position uh, rank wise uh, on the line and the linebackers and, and certainly the corners and safeties. Uh, that's, that's where my focus is at. I, I'm not de-emphasizing the offense, but quite frankly, she's, she's ready. <laughs> she's got, uh, she, there's probably two starting units uh, at, on the USC offense that could play on Saturday uh, for other schools if, if they wanted to, which, you know, kind of brings you to another expectation is uh, how many, how many kids are we going to lose after spring camp? We don't, we don't know. Um, I think we've ushered out a lot of the kids that really didn't want to be at USC last year. I think we have a group of kids that, and I think uh, Miller Moss is the one that always comes to mind. He always wanted to be a Trojan and he's not quitting on the potential of being out there one day. And uh, it's Caleb Williams job is to build up a big enough lead to where his number two can get in there and, and really develop his skill and obviously contribute to the season. Miller Moss did that last year, but it was so few, so far between um, his, his cameo appearances. It was, it was difficult to really gauge just how good or potentially how good he could be. Uh, I have high hopes for him, and I, and I just think the world of the kid as far as his sticking with USC and being there every Saturday and being kind of that second in command with authority because I think the players didn't fear when he came in, you know, the few appearances that he was able to come in. Uh, and I think they rallied behind him. Uh, and I think they would do it again and again because he's that type of person. And his skills are, you know, as good as most, you know, four and five star quarterbacks coming out of high school. My goodness, he just needs to get more, more minutes on the field. So I'm hoping he gets his, uh, Opportunities, and I hope Caleb brings it in such a way that the fourth quarter is Miller Moss time, and we can really start to build out, you know, his final year, if you will, assuming Caleb goes to the pros uh, after this year, uh, and Miller has a chance to really showcase his talents because he's earned it. He is uh, he is exactly the type of person, athlete, that you want coming to your university. In our case, USC. So with that, um, we're going to slowly but surely start to sign off here. And I hope everybody has uh, the type of expectations that, you know, I think we all need to have and exciting times ahead. Fight on. I'm looking for the uh, end button.